My name is Jamie Rodriguez. I'm from Coho's New York. This piece um, is titled Our Beat Match Free, which translates to uh, English with uh, Labor Will Set You Free. Um, this was influenced uh, when I did a residency in Berlin. I ended up uh, traveling out to the um, Oranienburg concentration camp. And it was basically one of those um, kind of life changing experiences where, um, you know, having the opportunity to go out there, you just um, wouldn't. To, to confront history and uh, something as dark and, and uh, just evil as that, um, you know, it just kind of it kind of resonated with me. So um, obviously, being um, an artist, I was wondering if there was maybe uh, some of that experience that uh, I could filter through um, a piece of work to maybe try and uh, communicate with an audience to, to bring them maybe some of the uh, emotion and feeling that I felt there, or, or just to uh, kind of, in a way, remember the history that was there. And, you know, the one thing also um, when dealing with, with a past history of something like that, you know, I was also um, thinking about what's been going on that a lot of people don't talk about with the Chinese Communist Party and the Uyghurs in China and their detention camps. So, you know, I figured that, um, you know, since that's not played out or not discussed, um, that, you know, I, I kind of want to make that reminder of past history with current and relevant history. Um, you know, so that's kind of um, where this piece comes from. So before um, the, in the installation or environment is built, it always starts with a, an oil painting. Um, so all the oil paintings uh, that I do um, are on site or, you know, they're done from a sketch. So I, you know, none of, like every landscape painting is, um, I've been to that site and visited there. Uh, you know, so they're not copied like out of a book or they're not imaginary or whatever. And then um, through, once the oil painting is done, um, you know, then there's kind of like this, uh, you know, um, it's, it's about recreating uh, the environment of the landscape with the actual physical stru uh, structures because that's then where uh, sculpture comes into play. So like I said, um, you know, it's kind of like a, like a mini scale down version of um, kind of like that, that, that moment that I had there in that, in that site or in that place. So like this one in particular, like um, I was actually in the infirmary in the, in the camp and uh, just over the, the walls. This was actually one of the landscapes. And, um, you know, I just had one of those moments of thinking of being inside the camp and basically kind of like looking out upon the, the beautiful landscape of Oranienburg and kind of thinking about, you know, <laughs> what was going on on this side of the fence and then, or this side of the wall, and then about what goes on on the other side of the wall. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to um, create a little bit of that experience for the for the viewer. You know, with these landscapes painting, uh, I, guess, I guess I like to see that these are like um, disciplines or lessons back just to the basics. Um, some of these were started, um, you know, just taking out oils, some plain air painting. Um, sometimes, once again, I said they start off as sketches. Um, the one thing um, about these is, is that um, being a, uh, I had met actually someone and they talked to me, uh, they were a painter, uh, like a professional, professional painter and been painting their, their whole lives. And I don't really consider myself a painter. I consider myself a sculptor who paints. And um, we were talking about process and material and, and um, color and tonality and, you know, kind of all these things about painterly qualities that um, I really don't, I really feel like I didn't understand her or I wasn't, um, I, I haven't really studied, studied like this person did. And I had explained to them that I, that I view or I look at paint as material, not, not color. And um, that's kind of works into like the kind of the, um, the process and the technique of, of I, I treat the, the paint itself and the and pigment more like uh, material and moving in and shifting around and then um you know, the one thing that, that then kind of I like to do is um, basing up and layering the paintings. So um, usually like the paintings don't start off as thick or heavy. So um, usually I'll go into a scene quickly um, and then, it, you know, it will get built up. Um, some of these paintings uh, basically have been painted on for like two or three years. It, it's more about just um, light composition, um, you know, 
coloring and kind of just creating, uh, trying to recreate that moment and that uh, kind of beauty that I felt that was there. But obviously it's my, it's my own interpretation of that, so. This piece uh, actually, once again, um, started out from um, actually the landscape painting. Um, this is also one of the, the newer ones I was interested. Um, I had done some abstract um, kind of paintings and sketches of reflections um, at a residency in Europe. So I had never got around to really finishing uh, the paintings or the sketches. So um, once again, like kind of dealing with the, with the um, abstract um, Colorado pieces, um, I started to think about, you know, I had these images of reflections. So I was trying to once again break out of that straightforward representational painting and uh, start out, you know, see if I could still, uh, you know, push my own boundaries of trying to get a little bit more abstract and, and dirty and raw with the, with the paint. And that's where um, this landscape came from. And then um, for some reason, um, it's like, I was just like, you know what, um, it needs an environment or it's, you know, it, it has to, it, it's not, it's not enough for me. So, um, you know, I just kind of, I was experimenting with um, making resin ponds and having them, um, kind of uh, be like shown or, or complement uh, these type of reflection paintings. Uh, it's like a contrast. And then um, I basically then just decided to, um, I was thinking about uh, more narratives with animals and um, like I said, I mean, just kind of taking uh, ideas that um, had never got around to doing and, and basically just kind of meshing it all together. And I guess like the way how this piece gets finished is um, I was reading uh, an excerpt from Malcolm X and he had talked about um, this relationship between um, politically, like with, with Republicans and, and Democrats and liberals and conservatives. And he he had made, uh, he had used animals as this analogy and using wolves, fox and sheep or whatever. And, um, you know, already wanting to, to uh, play on pawn narratives and, you know, just also with being aware of our climate around us right now, you know, I do like to sometimes throw these underlying serious issues in. And then it's like what you said before is that then, you know, trying to make some kind of uh, um, humor out of them to, to, to deal with them and grasp with them. Um, so, you know, um, I kind of ended up using, um, you know, from his speech, uh, this analogy that he made between um, the fox and the sheep. And then, you know, kind of then, you know, other things just end up, um, getting thrown in and, and draw reference to. Um, not that the, you know, when I do these pieces, um, there's no uh, direct or um, there, there's no train, there's no uh, thought train that I want you to like think. Um, I just want you to kind of um, just be aware that they're there, but I don't want to answer those questions for you. So um, I guess this is a piece um, where it's like I'm drawing from um, a, everything from a, traditional, or not traditional, but like an oil painting to, you know, Malcolm X, you know, speeches about, um, <laughs> about liberals and uh, conservatives. Um, and then, like I said, you know, then there's obviously some components in, in there uh, as well. And you, uh, I feel like that's just kind of like a summary of who I am um, as an artist that, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I really don't care. Um, and I feel like, like this piece is really representational of that. Everything is mostly um, insulation foam board and insulation foam. I've done workshops on how I create these animals, but then basically, uh, you know, um, it's combined with like, you know, like, like bubble wrap. Um, a lot of the faces are sculpted out of clay and then um, pulled from a plaster traditional mold and then cast in wax. And then, you know, I've been finding these ways um, to kind of do that. And um, an artist, contemporary artist who I've been, who's one of my favorites is uh, Volker de Jong, a Dutch artist. So um, I've been studying a lot of his figurative, or I've been looking at a lot of his figurative sculpture and his processes. And I've been trying to simplify that into my own, uh, you know, given studio and stuff like that. Um, and not, and since he's been dealing with the figure, I figured, you know, since I wanted to 
go into the animals that would you know that was kind of a, a start to create these narratives so like I said it's basically just um, a lot of um, insulation foam um, wax and then you know um, the epoxy resin is basically you know what makes up the ponds and then um, a lot of the metal that's that's used is really always just recycled cans that are cut up um, twisted and stuff like that and those are basically my like four or five main materials and like I said occasionally there's like a weird material thrown in like um, like a, a beehive or bubble wrap so like you know there's usually like one kind of um, material that that um, I like to call maybe uh, not so traditional or maybe like kind of a, a found material but you know for the most part to me um, still making everything um, from scratch or from hand is really critical and important so I don't take myself too seriously so everything makes me laugh um, that's kind of where the humor comes in and that's a way to kind of um, not uh, push away either side um, obviously so um, I think that's kind of like where you know giving uh, given topics that's kind of like where the humor is for myself to to keep some kind of humility between myself and uh, opposing viewpoints whether I agree with with one side or the other and I don't uh, I don't play favorites <laughs> so the, I, I don't I don't have favorites um, I feel like that it's just important to um, be in the studio to always be thinking to lis listen to, to people communicate uh, hear as many sides as possible, create dialogue, and then um, say what you want to say about it and uh, don't hold back. And, um, you know, when you're in a studio late at Rip, like, what do you have to lose?